you mean 500,000 Americans dead regularly if we don't deal with this climate disaster? That's right. The death toll would be even worse near the equator and the unrest, you know, would be global in nature. And sadly, you couldn't just invent a vaccine. So you've got to start work now to avoid those terrible consequences much later. Global warming is the latest in a long, almost never ending series of crusades. I've forgotten how many millions of dollars he's made out of this. Net zero by 2050, blah, 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 net zero, blah, 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 climate neutral. Blah, blah, blah. Have a serious discussion about how to protect ourselves against unwarranted apocalyptic thinking. Well, that's all playing out too with the COVID issue at the moment. So it's not accidental that the Bible has an apocalyptic book at the end of it. It's like this idea that everything could end and that everything could fall apart. I mean, that's true in life. You have apocalypses in your life all the time. And, and it's very daunting to think about that. It's hard not to fall into a pit while you're thinking about that. And so we do have to have a serious discussion about how to protect ourselves against unwarranted apocalyptic thinking. Well, that's all playing out too with the COVID issue at the moment. So human psychological frailties we have to take them seriously because we're a planetary force so yeah and i mean i and there's i cite this incredible book by uh, Vaslav smil where he actually does look at the different apocalyptic threats and what he comes up with as the biggest ones and it changed my mind too i think he's right he's like much more worried about asteroids wars influenzas and super volcanoes than climate change when mm -hmm. you look at both uh, probability and severity. Mm -hmm. So I totally agree. I would like to see more money going into asteroid collision prevention. When you really look at the history of asteroids, we should take those seriously, but yeah, we should also guard against clearly unwarranted apocalyptic thinking. I mean, you know, the truth of the matter is when you really look at the science of climate change the, and the IPCC to its credit does not include any apocalyptic scenarios. There isn't a good scientific scenario for how the world would end from climate change. Like you just have a hard time coming up with one. So you should say that again, because that's quite yeah. a striking statement in the IPCC reports, there's no apocalyptic vision. When they say more people could die from climate change, what they are actually saying is they say, if all else were equal, meaning if you didn't have climate change and you had the same high levels of economic growth, but natural disasters have declined over 90% over the last hundred years. They've declined 99% in places like Bangladesh, just through better storm warning systems and storm shelters. There is no prediction in the IPCC that more people will die in the future from natural disasters than die today. That doesn't exist. There is no scientific body that has predicted an increase of deaths from natural disasters or an increase of deaths from disease or the other things that people worry about with climate change. It's all based on some idea that yes, in a warmer world, you could get more deaths than you would get if you didn't have any warming at all. But that's first of all, not even an option. And it doesn't account for the fact that the additional warming is a byproduct of higher levels of growth, which would- Right, which is going to mitigate all of that damage and hopefully have positive environmental, environmental consequences. The UK has an enormous historical responsibility when it comes to historic emissions, so, since the climate crisis is an accumulative crisis. It's, I find it very strange that they're like, they are the ones who we are supposed to look up to now, but they are ob objectively one of the biggest climate villains. What is Greta really objecting to? She's objecting to the modern world. Greta Thunberg is not really an environmentalist. She's just wearing environmentalist dress. Let me tell you what she is. Let me, she's really a religious nutter at Hyde Park Corner. The end of the world is nigh. What if he's right, David? The end of the world is nigh. Well, uh, first of all, if it were, there'd be nothing we could do to stop it. Um, the, Millions of people dispute that, by the way. No, okay, well then, let, but let's, let's just try, let's just get the, the, the religious point right first. This is a form of millenarianism. It's completely known about, it appears repeatedly throughout history. And what we've done, we've got rid of God without getting rid of religion. Um, what, what you have with somebody like Thunberg is she really worships the earth. She's a nature, she's a worshipper of the nature goddess, mm -hmm. right? And, but what we've done, we brought the whole notion of flagellant Christianity. You as a Catholic will know all about this. We mustn't have too much pleasure. It's very bad for you. What do you do if you have too much pleasure? You flagellate yourself. You mustn't have too many possessions because they make you luxurious. The burning of fossil fuels, which creates the global warming uh, pollution mainly, 
also creates the air pollution that elevates the death rates under COVID-19. There have been multiple studies showing that uh, communities and counties that have more air pollution from burning fossil fuels have a significantly higher death rate from the pandemic. Uh, that's true in other countries as well. So we need to put the Black Lives Matter agenda in the center of the plans now being developed for a green recovery. We need a just transition so that those who are likely to, to suffer economically if we don't provide them with better jobs in this transition are taken care of. The uh, scientists who warned us about the pandemic included the very best epidemiologists and virologists in the world, and they warned us to prepare for a pandemic that was almost exactly like the one that we're struggling with now. So when we hear the climate scientists uh, arguing for even longer that we need to do something to stop the onrushing climate crisis, uh, the lesson seems clearly that it's best to listen to them. One other thing they have in common, both the, the COVID-19 pandemic and the climate crisis hit the communities of color and the poorest Americans first and hardest. And in that process reveal the really stark uh, and incredible inequities and injustices that have been allowed to go on for way, way too long. We got to do something about it. Global warming is the latest and a long, almost never-ending series of crusades. I've forgotten how many millions of dollars he's made out of this. The first, the first column I ever wrote more than 30 years ago was titled The Prophets of Doom, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, of Doom. And so the same, it's the same phenomenon uh, today. I mean, there is, there is money in this stuff. You have to pretend to be certain because otherwise you'll get no support for what you're doing. I mean, you go around saying, well, I, I think there'll be global warming. Well, that, that, there's no money in that. <laughs> I mean, there's no votes in that. I mean, what, what you know, I, I just talked to God and he told me that it's going to be global warming. Now, let's set up a multi-billion dollar program to stop it. So many places where they've had record low temperatures. They had snow in Houston, the earliest they've ever had. Uh, the, the, the last the last, last record for something like this was like five inches. They got 20 inches. I mean, <laughs> every, and what used to amuse me a lot in recent years is when they ask, uh, schedule a global warming conference and they have to cancel it because of the cold. You know, I mean, it's just, but it, it, does, it just doesn't make a dent. Imagine if you're an assistant professor uh, in, uh, in meteorology or climatology, uh, and uh, you, you, you think that global warming is a crock, and, and the full professors who are going to vote on your tenure and whatnot uh, are getting millions of dollars in grants. I mean, how eager are you going to be to burst into print and saying it's all nonsense? <laughs>